way too far back, but that's okay. I'll just quickly fly through all of the motion, all the motion exercises that we did together. And then we did, we looked at projectile motion, significant figures, current, voltage, resistance, Ohm's law circuits, parallel series circuits. And then what we did was we talked about um, what we're going to talk about today, uh, we talked about electrical circuits, we talked about the short circuits, and we briefly talked about, with the bell was going, these ideas here. So I actually want to spend some time on those at the start of this lesson to further cement the idea. So we're going to talk about lesson 25, constructing series circuits. We will be able to construct series circuits and analyze their properties. So what would I've got to do for you guys? Yeah, before I can give you guys Electronics 2, which has got a lot of this circuit stuff in it, I've really got to teach you guys the basics of circuits. So that means that today I'm going to be starting off. I've got six circuits that I need to get through. I am not going to get through all six circuits today. My goal today is to go through circuits one to three. But even if I don't get through all of that, then that's okay. I can come back later on. So that's my goal today is to go through circuits one to three. Um, so we're going to analyze the properties in some circuits. What we're going to do first is we're going to look at these ideas here for calculating the current, the resistance, and the voltage for a series circuit. We're going to quickly touch on a parallel circuit, and then we're going to look at some actual series circuits in um, what they would look like. So let's grab a look at some questions first. The first question that I'm going to tackle is this. A series circuit has a has eight resistors measuring two ohms. Okay, what is the total resistance? So what would that circuit look like? Eight resistors in series. Whoa, hold on, there's a question here. Oh, sorry, someone was just finishing off the learning goal. Um, let me just go back a second. Let me just talk about this. We will be able to construct a series circuit and analyze their properties. We have a construct series circuit, not a series circuit. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to move on now. You haven't got this copy down yet. You can just copy it down later on when I put it online. But also these, um, these slides are also always available to you guys. They are, there is a link to them on the Google Classroom if you scroll down far enough all the way to the very, very start. If you don't know it, I can re-upload the link to, the, to this PowerPoint if you want later on. Yeah. So we're going to start off with this. A series circuit has eight resistors measuring two ohms. What is the total resistance? Well, what does this look like first? Remember, a series circuit means you've got things that are connected one after the other. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight resistors in series. And the part that we, the reason we know these are in series is because it goes one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. Okay. So let's just say we've got eight of these in series. So they each measure two ohms. So I'm gonna write that down. Two ohms, two ohms, two ohms, two ohms. You guys will get the picture. There is a massive shortcut here, but I'm going to do this properly. Two ohms. Now, what we want to do is we want to calculate the total resistance. The total resistance of the series circuit can be found by taking R1 and adding R2 and so on and so forth. So that means the total resistance for us here is 2 plus 2 plus 2. We're going to do this eight times, plus two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm hoping, because I'm talking to some people that are doing engineering maths, that are doing some high level maths, that you guys can recognize that 
if we've got eight resistors that are measuring two ohms, and we're just adding them all up, you could just take the shortcut for eight times two, which means that you're going to have 16 ohms worth of resistance. All of these resistors is the same as a circuit that would look like this. These two things are exactly the same. Ultimately, electrons are going to find it just as difficult to go over eight small jumps than one big 16 ohm jump. So that's just how we can calculate uh, resistance of a series circuit. And what we're going to do later on is we're going to look at how the voltage drops would work for a circuit like that. Now, before we move on to actually looking at some real series circuits, let's look at, um, let's do another quick little word equation, which is we're going to do this one here. Um, a parallel circuit has, I'm going to rewrite this part here, 8 times 2. A parallel circuit has a resistor measuring 2 ohms and another resistor in parallel measuring five ohms. What is the total resistance? Well, let's draw this first. We have a battery. And that battery is connected to two paths. One path is going to go to the right and one path is going to go up. The one that goes up is going to be connected to a two ohm resistor. The one that goes to the right is going to be connected to a 5 ohm resistor. Now, let's use a little bit of logic here first. Firstly, I wanted to just, I always like to just look at just the idea. We know that this resistor is a lower at the top, is a lower resistance. So because of that, it's going to have more current going through it. That's not important for us now, but it might be later on. Um, and the reason that it has more current for it is because this one at the top is the path of least resistance. It's got the smallest resistance rather than this 5 ohm path, which has got a fair bit of resistance. So therefore, it's going to have, you know, barely any current going through it in comparison. So, how do we find the total resistance? Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, oh, seven ohms, let's just add them together. That would be so easy if it was just adding them together, but it's not. The reason that it's not seven ohms is because, you know, electrons can have the choice. Some of the electrons are going through a two ohm path and some of the electrons are going through a five ohm path. Uh, I mean, you can think about it as like a water flow. You can think about it instead of water flowing through one hole, the water has got, you know, multiple holes that it can flow through. So therefore, more of it will, it'll be easier to flow through two holes than it is to flow through one hole. So let's actually calculate how do you do that. How you calculate it is you actually add the reciprocals. So you get one on RT equals one on two plus one on five. You don't add the actual numbers, you add the reciprocals. Now, there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can do this using fractions. If you're really super comfortable with fractions, then go nuts. If you're not comfortable with fractions, there are other ways you can do this. Let's do this with fractions first, because I think it's, it's engineering maths. It's supposed to be a math subject, so you're supposed to be able to hand so to do add these two fractions, what we would do is we'd say, well, this has got a denominator of two, this has got a denominator of five. You can't add them together. The lowest common multiple um, of two and five is 10. Two times five is 10, five times two is 10. It's the lowest common multiple. So what we could do is we could say 10 plus 10, one half is going to become five tenths. One fifth is going to become two tenths. So one on RT, oopsies, I can't do that because it's too close to the bottom of the page. One on RT is equal to seven tenths. And RT, our total resistance is equal to 10 over seven 
because all I do is I flip both sides. So I flip this side, so RT over 1, which is RT. There's 10 over 7. 10 divided by 7, is it going to be about 1.4, I believe? Let's have a look. 10 divided by 7 is 1.4. I was right. 1.43. So the answer is 1.43 ohms. Um, now that might be a bit surprising to you because if you look at this, the smallest resistor in here is 2 ohms. It's actually the total resistance is smaller than in each of the individual resistors. And that's because of this reason here. It's actually easier for the water, for the um, electricity to move through because there are two parts. Even though both parts are harder, overall the electrons find the parts easier than just going through one of these parts on their own. So this why it's 1.43. What about those of you that are like, ugh, I hate fractions, I don't want to deal with it. You could just do this. One half is 0 0.5. One fifth is 0 0.2. So one on RT equals 0 0.7. RT equals 0, 1 divided by 0 0.7, which equals, you bet, guess it, 1.43 ohms, if you don't like it. Now we're going to be doing a fair bit of practice with these and actually going to give you guys a chance to work on these. But I wanted to, you know, give you guys a quick overview of what, how to do these basic types of questions first. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to actual series circuits. As I said, we, I would like to get through three examples, but I may not only get through three examples, I may only get through, um, I may only get through two examples, but it's okay. There's not, I'm not going to give you guys Electronics 2 to do today. I'm going to probably give you guys Electronics 2 to start working on on Tuesday. So don't stress about Electronics 2. But a lot of Electronics 2 is just going to be you guys practicing this stuff here on this page. Um, I'm actually going to skip this challenge because, yeah, I, don't, I want to actually start working on some of the questions. So let's look at this picture here. Could I get you guys to draw up for me this circuit here? It's got a six volt battery and it's got two light bulbs which are both four ohms. I'm going to get you guys to draw the circuit and what we're going to do is we're going to start breaking this circuit down. So let's get this copy down first and then we'll start tackling it. I'm going to give you guys maybe 45 seconds from now to copy it down. I'm using light bulbs here as resistors, but you could just use resistors if you wanted just those square boxes, or you could use those squiggly lines like this. Both of them work for resistor. It doesn't matter which one you do. They both mean the same thing. So for a question like this, we have to answer this. We have to find the voltage drops and the current. Now to do this, I like to break this down into a couple of ideas or steps. Um, we know this, firstly, let's talk about the basics. We know this is a series circuit. The reason we know this is a series circuit is because there's only one path for the electron to go down. They can only go down, or the current to go down. The current can only go one way. Now, the re this is actually going to be one of the easier ones to do because both of the resistors are exactly the same. So what we do when we, when we deal with this is I like to look at three things for these type of questions. I like to look at the voltage. I like to look at the current. And I like to look at the resistance. So, and what we're going to, but in order to do that properly, we need to do one extra thing, which is I'm actually going to name this A. I'm going to call this one B. So light bulb A and light bulb B. It's going to be useful 
maybe not for this lesson, but maybe not for this example, but for the next example, definitely. So what we're going to do, and we can start at many places, but I'm going to start firstly with voltage. Can I ask you guys, what is the, and I'm going to put this to chat, what do you guys think? And there's only um, 10 of you guys here, so there's not many places for you guys to hide. What do you guys think? And you can be a guess, it's fine. What do you guys think the total voltage is for this circuit? Six. Perfect. Someone says straight away. Did it say it properly? Well, it's okay. Six volts is the total voltage of the circuit. Yep. And the reason that I know that we know that it's six volts is because it's written right there. Now, we don't know what VA is. We don't know what the voltage drop over this resistor is. Okay. We can maybe make a guess, but we don't know exactly what it is. We also don't know what VB is. We don't know what the voltage drop over the, the B resistor is, but we can make a guess. But let's just leave it as VA and VB, because we don't know what it is. Um, do we know, does it say on this picture, does it say on this picture what the total current is? Does it say what's in this picture? Can someone tell me in chat, does it say on this picture what the total current is? No, it doesn't. It doesn't tell us what the total current is. It doesn't tell us what the current through IA is. And it doesn't tell us what the current through B is. We actually have no information about the current whatsoever. So let's just skip the current completely. And let's talk about the resistance. Do we know the total resistance? Yes or no? Some people are saying yes. All right, well, what's the total resistance? Where does it say the total resistance? Okay. Okay, so some people are pointing this out. We don't know the total resistance, but we can work it out super easily. So before we do the total resistance, let's write down RA. RA, well, guess what? That resistance is written right there. 4 ohms, I don't actually have to calculate it. And RB happens to also be 4 ohms. Great, awesome. That's kind of nice and easy. Now, what we would normally do at this point is I'd say, good, we've actually gotten all the information out of this question that we can see. So the next part of it is for us to use our brains. So now RT, we know that RT for a series circuit is the sum of all the resistors. So RT is going to be 4 ohms plus 4 ohms. That's going to be 8 ohms. So that means we have actually can calculate the total resistance is 8 ohms. I'm going to do this in a lighter color red because this is something that we've found by doing calculations. We haven't found this by... Um, by reading it off, we've actually had to use that brain. Now, the next thing that we can calculate, so let's have a look at the graph now. It would actually made sense, it actually made sense for us to calculate RT because we already knew two of these things. We could fill in the blanks and then we get uh, like, think of it as like a tic-tac-toe. So we get three in a row, tic-tac-toe, uh, or noughts and crosses, we would win. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to keep playing this game of noughts and crosses. We need to look for the next thing that we could fill in. The next thing that we could fill in, that we could calculate in this game of noughts and crosses, would be this row going across. The reason we would calculate that row going across is because we already know this, we already know this, we just need to calculate this one, this one in the middle. So how do we, how do we do play this game of noughts and crosses to get this value of it? And guess what? We know this formula, vt equals it times rt, this is V equals IR. Now, if we know VT, because that's six volts, 
We know that IT, we don't know what IT is, sorry. But we know RT now, we know that's eight. We only know that's eight because we just calculated it. We can get IT. IT is going to be six over eight or three over four. So that means our current through the circuit is actually 0 0.75 amps. That's our total current. But here's the, I'm um, sorry, that's being a bit smooshed there. Let me see if I can space it out here. Our total current is 0 0.75 amps. Now, one of the advantages, is because this is a series circuit, right? There is nowhere for our, for our current to go. It only has one path. That means that our current through A is going to be 0 0.75. And our current through B is going to be, you guessed it, 0 0.75. There is nowhere left for it to go. That has to be the situation. Now, keep playing the game of tic-tac-toe. We have one, two. We can get this one here. We can also get this one here. Let's do them together now. So VA is going to equal IA times RA. We know that IA is 0 0.75. We know that I, R, RA is 4. If you go 0 0.75 times 4, this comes out to be 3 volts. So our voltage happens to be 3 volts. I'm going to do this again in a light blue because this is something we've calculated and then for vb it's actually the exact same vb equals ib times rb equals 0 0.75 times 4 equals 3 volts so that means what is the voltage drop over each resistor we lose 3 volts over each resistor what is the current the current is 0 0.75 amps. Um, and that is all that we can calculate. And we've actually figured out everything we need to do for this first um, circuit. Now, I'm going to leave this up for a little bit because I know that I've written down a lot on this page. And so for some of you guys, you might be like, oh, crap, we've got to try and write everything down. And you've been trying to listen to me maybe you have me writing it down so i'm going to keep this up for a little bit um quick quick some quick things i want to throw out there firstly number one when i say tic-tac-toe you guys should begin to start to figure out there are many ways that you can play tic-tac-toe with this vehicle's ir you could instead of calculating um, and later on, you'll find it's like, oh, I can calculate the total voltage or I can calculate the total resistance and do it that way. There's, sometimes there's more than one way to win the game. Secondly, some of you guys that are very educated are probably picking up this like, oh, well, they're the same, they're the same um, globes of the same resistance. So therefore, I don't need to calculate VB. I can just work it out. In fact, you could calculate VB by just going 6 minus 3 you know that has to use all six volts. There are so many ways to solve these kinds of problems. As long as you're systematic and you plan your way through, you should actually be able to solve these kinds of problems relatively easily. Right, I've got 10 minutes left. I've got, ooh, okay, mm, about 10 minutes left. I'm going to try and do question, the second one. And then that's going to be it. That's all I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the first the first circuit and the second circuit. So let's pop open the second circuit now. This is the second circuit here. I'd like you guys to copy it down. It looks very similar to the first circuit, but it's a little bit different. I'm gonna give you guys not too much time to copy it down because I still need about 10 minutes to do this question. So I'm gonna give you guys a minute to copy this down. Um, it, and then we're gonna start picking it apart the same exact way that we picked the previous one apart. Um, I've seen a couple of people join the lesson while I've been teaching. 
you guys are a bit late. You missed out on the start of it, but it will go up on YouTube later on so you can watch it there. But what I would appreciate from you guys is um, you doing the attendance question. The reason I'm saying that is there are a lot of students who are absent today because they've got um, the maths competition, which is fine, but it means that I don't have, I don't, I don't want to lose track of who's here and who isn't here. All right, let's give this a crack. So, just like last time, we're going to explore this using three things. V, v for voltage, I for current, and R for resistance. And I'm gonna to try to keep these colors because I find color coding things makes it a lot easier. We're going to label this resistor A. I'm going to label this resistor B. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to write down all the information. Now, we happen to know what VT is. It actually says it. It's six. But we don't know what the voltage drop through resistor A is. And we don't know what the voltage drop through resistor B is. As for the current, Guess what? Just like before, we have no idea what the total current is, the total current through A, or the total current through B. Now, we do know that once we figure out what the total current is, we can work out these other ones. And as for the resistance, at the moment, we don't know what the total resistance is. But we do know what the resistance through A is. It says it here, 1 ohm. And we do know what the resistance to B is. We know that's four ohms. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna throw this open to chat. We've got about 10 minutes to solve this problem. So I'm gonna get you guys to suggest to me, what do you guys think might be a good next step? What do you guys think we should do now? A clue might be, remember we're trying to play tic-tac-toe, we're trying to get lines, we're trying to get complete lines, three in a row. Obviously, if you had more than one resistor, then we would um, have to work with that. If we had like three resistors, you would just have three of these columns. You would have three of these rows. Uh, R total is what I've been suggested. V total and RB. So let's uh, we can't calculate V total without having R, R total. So let's calculate R total. The total voltage RT. I'm going to do this in red because it's a red question. RT is going to be actually I might do it over here again. RT is going to be R A plus R B. RT is going to be one plus four equals five ohms. So RT equals five ohms. We've now got that. We've now won this tic-tac-toe. We've got three in a row. So now what's the next tic-tac-toe that we could win? What's the next three in a row that we could make? What would be a good next step? In chat, IT. Correct. Now, can you give me a suggestion, Everest? How would we go about calculating IT? What formula would we use? Or anyone, actually, Eric or uh, Ricardo, anyone in chat that wants to, or Leo, or if anyone wants to give the chat, how would we calculate IT? We've got the next one is. Um, v equals IR. Perfect. Um, we've, we've the next the, for those of you that don't get it, we're now going to do this tic tac toe grid here because we've got cross, cross, big blank. We just need to do one more. So, how do we do that? How do we calculate IT? Well, we can use V equals IR. Um, we're going to calculate this by going 
VT equals IT times RT. But we don't want VT, we want IT. So we're gonna move, we're gonna divide both sides by RT. This gives us VT divided by RT is IT. The total voltage divided by the total resistance can give us the total current. And when we say total current, we usually mean the current that goes into and out of the battery. That's normally what I think about when I think about total current. When I think about total resistance, I think about, well, what is the resistance of the whole circuit? If I could replace this whole circuit with one resistor, it'd be a big five ohm resistor. And VT is, well, what's the voltage in the battery? So if we've got VT, we've got RT, we can calculate IT, we can go, VT is six divided by five equals IT. And therefore IT, we're gonna call six divided by five, we're gonna call that 1.2 amps. You don't have to use decimals, you can use fractions, but I prefer decimals, it just makes my life a bit easier. 1.2 amps. What's the next step that you guys think? What's the next thing we can do now that we know that the total current is 1.2 amps? Got five minutes left of the class. So we're almost done with this question. Who can tell me what's the next step? If you don't remember, it's exactly the same as the one that we just did. Yep, beautiful. Thank you, Loa. Leoa says, I'm sorry if I keep getting in that one, but yeah. He goes, well, if we know that if we know we can, I total is the same as IA is the same as IB, is the same as everything. The current only has one way to go. So therefore, if you know that IA is one, is, if I total is 1.2, guess what? IA is 1.2, IB is 1.2. And now you can sort of see that's what this rule here means. The, res, the current is the same at all of the points to the circuit. Once we know the current, we can use that to figure out the voltages. Now VA, I'm gonna do this in blue because it's a voltage question. VA equals IA times RA. That's gonna be IA it happens to be 1.2 and RA happens to be one. One times 1.2 equals 1.2 volts. So we lose 1.2 volts over the first resistor. For the second one, VB equals IB times RB. IB in this case is 1.2, but RB is not one, RB is four. 1.2 times four happens to be 4.8. So we've got minus 4.8 volts. Yeah, and that is actually it. That is a complete solve of this particular problem. Now, it's interesting comparing this one, the first one to the second one, because the voltage drops are different. And it makes sense that the voltage drops are different. This resistor is easy for it to get through, so it doesn't need much energy. But this resistor is a lot higher, so it needs more resistance to get through. And that's why it's got a higher voltage. I will point out, by the way, for those of you that uh, want to know, there is a little bit of a shortcut that we could have done. Instead of this calculation 4.8, we could have played tic-tac-toe. We could have, instead of going tic-tac-toe this way, we go this way. How would you do that? We know that, just, just so I can show you guys, V total equals VA plus VB. So if you know that the total voltage is six, you know that the voltage through A is 1.2, then whatever, VB needs to add up to get to six. So six minus 1.2 equals VB, VB equals 4.8.
involved. So that's just a different way to answer the same question. So it doesn't actually matter which way you fill in this tic-tac-toe, whether you go down or you go across, you should still get the same answer. Ladies and gents, uh, if you did hear over my mic, that was the bell. That means this is the end of period four. I want to thank you guys for listening. I will chat to you guys um, next time.